What up, Wizards? It's Dev and Ziggy. He's here, too. We're from SBMTG. We like that magic stuff. And I'm coming to you on a dark and stormy night in my neck of the woods because it's a brand new day in Standard, ladies and gentlemen. There's some sunshine to be had because we got some bans last week. A lot of the cards that people were, like, most irritated by are gone now, at least for the next five weeks or so. And I know five weeks doesn't sound like that long of a time, but I think 2020 has taught us that five weeks can seem like a very long time in it. I don't know why I'm doing like a, like a British supervillain voice, but anyway, five, five and a half weeks or so at time of recording until we get Zendikar Rising on Arena is kind of a sort of a long time and I don't want to spend that time talking about the same old garbage that we've talked about for the last like year and a half which is what everyone's doing <laughs> it seems like everyone's like oh we got a brand new standard let's Ember Cleave right, what's like it's Ember Clover that's a deck and one of young soul time so we've all we talked about these decks time and time again and I'm a little bit sick of it. So since we have a wide open standard for the next month and a half almost, let's talk about some cards that get no love. These are 10 cards that you're sleeping on right now. Well, that was quick, we're already back. It's because I don't want to waste any time. We got a lot of crazy cards to talk about, but I want to go ahead and kick the list off with a super spicy honorable mention. Make sure you got some ice cream or some glass of milk on hand or something, because I don't know if you can stand this hot sauce. Honorable mention, and maybe the last time I'll ever get to do this. This is a rhythm of the world. It's this card, the one we always sing when we play it, and it's kind of a meme, I know, but I think it has a real chance in this format, right? Teferi's gone now, and please don't take a shot every time I mention Teferi in this video, because you'll be blackout drunk and doing crimes by halfway through the runtime, so don't... Don't do it to yourself, but I think that Teferi leaving the format means a lot for a lot of cards, and Rhythm of the Wild is one we need to kind of analyze in this context, because not having your three mana do-nothing enchantment get bounced, and your opponent gets to draw a card, like the turn after you play it, is probably good. That's probably a much better environment in which to play this card. We've all been looking for ways to make, like, Elder Gargaroth good. And giving it haste seems like a pretty good way to make that card good. <laughs> like a, maybe a dozen other cards that we've talked about in this format. But if cards like Elder Gargaroth and even like Baneslayer Angel are going to be like truly relevant in this format, I think it's a lot safer to play Rhythm of the Wild now to make sure that you can actually I don't know, like do something with your creatures the turn that you play them. But especially creatures with attacks triggers like Elder Gargaroth seem pretty good in a Rhythm deck. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some people messing around with this thing. But let's get, <clears throat> let's get serious, but on our <clears throat> serious faces for this, because we're going to actually start the list now with number 10, Elspeth's Nightmare. Now, I remember when this card first came out, a lot of people were saying, oh, this would be really good in a mid-range format, right? You know, pick off a small creature, and then second turn that it's in play, you get like an important removal spell out of their hand, or maybe something that draws cards, a planeswalker, whatever. And then maybe you exile their graveyard that takes out their euros, blah, blah, blah. But the format was never actually really that conducive to mid-range. But, you know, you can make the argument, and a lot of people have, that the format is much more conducive to mid-range now that there's not, you know, a crazy top-end in-game combo kill in Wilderness Reclamation plus Explosion anymore. We don't have that. We don't have Teferi, and without Teferi, there won't be as much Bant. Since there's not as much Bant, we won't have as much Elspeth Conquers Death, as much Shatter the Sky, stuff like that. So... In other words, the format may be, because of all those dominoes falling, a lot more, you know, friendly and inviting to mid-range decks. In which case, this does get a lot better. You know, imagine playing it on turn three when you're on the play. You can take out that fresh scavenging ooze that can't get any bigger. And then next turn, you can take out, again, like a Casualties of War from their hand or something like that. And then exile their graveyard so they can't get their Euros back. There's a lot of really cool dimensions to this card against a lot of decks. But the deck that I specifically want to see this card in is the Doom foretold deck on curve you play this on turn three you play doom foretold on four you can just sack it to doom foretold if you don't mind not getting the exile your opponent's graveyard thing most of the time that will be the least impactful thing on the card there's going to be times where you want to use that third chapter but very often it's going to be worth just sacking it to doom foretold on turn five because the first two chapters are kind of the best part of it a lot of people have been looking for a way to replace Teferi and Doom Foretold decks because those decks have been by and large Esper when they try to compete. But I think that this is a great three drop replacement for Teferi if you're looking for one because there's a lot of decks this affects in the format. Against aggro, there's a chance that you take out a small creature on turn 
three, this is especially effective on the play. And then turn four, you get the Ember Cleave out of their hand. There's just so many cool things that this card can do against different decks in this format that I definitely think it's worth looking out for if you're building that Doom Foretold deck. It might be a really good three drop. But hey, Ziggy's back, that's pretty good news. But speaking of the Doom Foretold deck, and I guess speaking of enchantments too, the first two cards on the list were enchantments, so I guess it tangentially relates. I think it might be time in this format to shut up and dance. That's right, Dance of the Mans. Actually looks pretty decent in these Doom Foretold decks, so I think you can dance in this format. There are plenty of stars for this deck to dance with, and I think that's the last awful pun. I formally apologize for all those, but I can't resist. You know, this might actually be able to replace the Expansion Explosion Wilderness Reclamation combo as like the premier late game, you know, just game ending combo kill in the format. It's always been a really powerful way for Doom Foretold to close the game, and Doom Foretold doesn't have a whole lot of ways to close the game outside of Dance of the Mans. That's why that deck is so often Esper. So I think we might see a resurgence in this card popping up, and I fully, I fully support that. Number eight is Conclave Mentor, because why not Lady Snack, right? I mean, again, no Teferi in the format to bounce this to turn after it comes into play or bounce anything that you do manage to get counters on, reset them completely. Just Teferi really represented a, a massive blow <laughs> to this card's playability, right? And I think just without that card in the format, period, the deck gets better. But, you know, Cat got banned too, so we're seeing relatively fewer um, Rakdo Sacrifice and Jun Sacrifice decks. And that means fewer Claim the Firstborns. So I guess you can make the argument that with fewer Teferis and fewer Claim the Firstborns, little aggro dudes like this and, you know, two drops that you can set up synergy for your deck around are probably way safer to play. Now, there's a counter argument where because Teferi's not in the format, instant speed removal like Eliminate is seeing a little bit more play, so maybe cards like this aren't as safe. And that's actually a really good counter argument that I don't have a counter counter for, but all I will say is that I'm, I'm interested again in making a deck around Conclave Mentor because I'm not as crushed at the proposition of all my stuff getting bounced or whatever. Um, <laughs> as often as it normally would if Teferi were in the format. So yeah, Eliminate Grasp of Darkness, you know, all of these things still exist, but I guess we get around Heartless Act. That's something. That's something. But let's move on to number seven. Now, it's important to note that I keep saying, like, oh, there's no Teferis, and there's going to be less Elspeth Conqueror's Death, there's going to be less Shatter the Sky, and so that means creatures are more playable, and blah, blah, you know, I, I keep saying that. But um, <laughs> I think a good counter to that is that, again, instant speed removal is more playable nowadays because Teferi doesn't just blank it in your hand. Teferi doesn't make you cast it at sorcery speed. So, again, we see more Murderous Rider nowadays. We see more Eliminate nowadays. So, in that same vein, I think a card that people aren't talking about, because people are definitely talking about Murderous Rider, is uh, Mythos of Nethroi. Abzan actually looks like okay to me right now. I think there's definitely a way to build Abzan that makes it a super powerful deck. You get not only Nissa, but Elspeth Conqueror's Death, Shatter the Sky. You get a lot of very good cards in Abzan, but formerly it just wasn't the best decks to play because you had access to Teferi, so why would I not just play Ban? instead of Abzan. I still think that with Euro and like Hydroid Crisis in the format, you can make the argument that Soltai is probably a better color combination than Abzan, but if you do, you know, decide to go the Abzan route, you get access to this extremely powerful instant speed removal spell that blows literally any permanent type that's non-land, I guess. Um, to smithereens, I uh, used the word smithereens in 2020, but still, you get, you get my point. For three mana, if you are going to go Abzan, this is probably one of the better reasons to do so, because you just get to blow up anything, and it's not like Assassin's Trophy, where your opponent gets something out of the deal. No, no, you just blow whatever you want up, and that's actually, actually seems like a pretty relevant piece to remember exists now that Teferi's not in the format. I mean, number six is a bit of a personal pick, but I just love Brash Taunter so much, and he has to be on this list somewhere. You know, one of my first first streams that we did on Twitch, we played with the blue-red Bl uh, Brash Taunter deck. And it was good. It won some games. <laughs> it's actually not bad. It's like sort of a control deck, you know, kind of a burn deck. But once you get your Brash Taunter down, you can just do stuff like Storm's Wrath and destroy everything on the board, including Counterspells, or including Planeswalkers. <laughs> Why did I say Counterspell? Including Planeswalkers. You know, deal four damage to your opponent's face too because your Brash Taunter got dealt damage. So it's just such a fun, cool deck. But like one of the worst things that deck could face was a Teferi deck that also played Elspeth Conquer's Death, and like all Teferi decks play Elspeth Conquer's Death. Because Teferi can bounce 
health, but conquers death, and it's just impossible for Brash Taunter to like really stay out, whether it's getting bounced and you feel bad because you have to pay five mana for it again, or it just gets exiled forever. Like the one thing that could actually deal with it is Elspeth Conquers Death, and there were so many decks playing it, but now with fewer decks playing both those cards, because one of them's banned entirely, I think Brash Taunter, like, has a chance. <laughs> this card has actually, like, shown me, personally, anecdotally, time and time again, that not only is it super fun to have Stuffy Doll in Standard, but it's profitable, too, and if if the format is, like, actually trending more mid-range, I think we might actually see some Taunter kind of creep its way up into top 16s or something, because I'm telling you, this card is in, is very, very powerful, especially if very few decks are playing Elspeth Conqueror's Death. This card is amazingly good, a surprising percentage of the time. I just noticed how many cards on this list are like, mid-range is good again, but I'm, you know, I'm going to make, make the case for some of these cards, because like nobody else is doing it. But I guess a card that I have seen people talk about in my Twitch chat, but like <laughs> literally nowhere else, is Snap Dax. I've, I've always liked this card. I kind of freaked out about it when it first got previewed, if you don't if you don't remember. I did that. Seems a little embarrassing now, but in a format where aggro is real again and it seems like Mono Red is like actually threatening to be the top dog, then Snap Dax looks like a pretty freaking sweet card to play, ladies and gentlemen. Mutate overall looks like a better strategy with less Teferi in the format. There's that. Also, less Wilderness Reclamation to counter your spells and just beat you in the endgame. There are so many times playing Mutate where, like, even if you get Auspicious Sterics mutated, you get, like, four permanents on the battlefield. Whatever. Wilderness Reclamation's already on the table. They untap. They, you know, explode you for, for 20 and you just lose, right? So, it can feel really bad to set everything up and still have this over-the-top combo kill that murders you in the late game. And you could still, that could still happen because Ugin is a thing, right? <laughs> Imagine playing Auspicious Sterics finally. You get five things on the table and then they just Ugin. That could definitely still happen, but, you know, in the larger, in the smaller context, I think Mutate is, is probably looking a lot better right now, but in kind of a, you know, a, a more micro rather than macro sense, I think Snapdax might be okay right now, too. You know, it's almost like an Enter the God Eternals effect. You get to hit something for four, you gain four life, you get a creature, and in this case, it's a really good creature, that fights Mono Red really well, too. Note the double strike, so if a creature has, like, double strike from, um, from Embercleave, you still get to hit... <laughs> <laughs> with Snapdax if you do end up blocking with it or if they block with a cleaved creature or something. So the double strike's going to be relevant even on defense some of the time, but against some decks, this just represents a crazy tempo swing where even if they put you at like six life, relatively low life total, then you can just bring this down, kill their Torbran even, but even if you kill a small creature, you're still killing a guy, gaining four life, getting a 3-5 double striker, and that's just... It's just unbelievable. So I think that in a format a little bit more conducive to mid-range, this card makes a lot more sense. It feels like a Siege Rhino that actually affects the board when it enters the battlefield, and that is high praise. But number four is, I think, the last like mid-range matters card on the list, so you'd be happy to know that. But I guess this could you could put this in aggro decks, as a matter of fact. Luminous Broodmoth is this number on the list. Number four. I had, to, I had to look down and check. But yeah, this is a card that people really only talked about during preview season when we were all like, oh, this looks amazing. It's Mothra. Blah, but like, then I guess it's all like no play whatsoever. Um, but I think that might change a little bit. Again, if the format slows down by even like half of a turn, Luminous Broodmoth looks pretty good. And you could argue that the format does. You know, with no growth spiral, that means that these band decks aren't going to get to Shatter the Sky on turn three nearly as often. And a Shatter the Sky on turn three when they're on the play or even on the draw is usually pretty devastating to aggro decks. You know, they're going to be able to do it before you get down Brood Moth, and then Brood Moth is a pretty terrible four drop if there's no other creatures on the table. So in a format where Shadow of the Sky isn't going to happen as often, and it's not going to happen on turn three nearly as often especially, then a card like Luminous Brood Moth might see a little bit more play. Again, if sweepers slow down by like a turn or three quarters of a turn even, then like... I think Luminous Broodmoth might have just the smallest of chances in this format, but I think there's fewer sweepers overall. Even the Soul Tide deck doesn't play too many sweepers in the main deck. You see, like, two Extinction Event, which conveniently gets around Luminous Broodmoth, which detracts from my argument, but I will say, with fewer sweepers overall in main decks for the time being, a card like Luminous Broodmoth could be pretty sweet, and the fact that Ram decks can't get to their sweepers nearly as quickly, also a huge factor in this card's playability. Now, we're in the top three now. Amazingly, we made it, ladies and gentlemen. This is a card that I can't say no one's talking about, because I, I kind of just talked about this card, like, four days ago. 
<laughs> I just did a video, you know, the top 10 cards that could have been great but never were because of this factor or that factor. They're about to rotate. If you haven't seen that video, I'm actually really proud of that video. I like that video. Go check it out. But um, in any case, I talked about Finale of Promise in that video. The main reason Finale of Promise never saw play is because Teferi's in the format, and Teferi's passive ability is worded in such a way that you can't cast the spells that you would be able to cast off of Finale of Promise because you could only cast stuff whenever you could cast a sorcery. Whoops, so uh, Finale of Promise just literally doesn't work if they have a Teferi out. But now, opponent can play Teferi, and if an opponent does play Teferi, immediately call a judge. Get them kicked out. Get them kicked, if I, if you're playing Magic in real life, <laughs> get, them, get them kicked out of that place. Because um, <laughs> you just can't do that anymore. If they play a Teferi on Arena, there's... They have hacked. They are a hacksaw. But in any case, you know what I'm. You know what I'm getting at here. You can actually cast these spells now. So maybe we can finally play Arclight Phoenix in this freaking format. I guess we did play Arclight Phoenix. We played Arclight Phoenix for like five months, and then I then then something horrible happened. So maybe maybe Arclight Phoenix is playable again, um, in large part due to Finale of Promise. I know a lot of people are talking about Arclight Phoenix right now, mostly in the context of the blue-red spells deck, but I hear people bring up, oh, this card's out of the format, that card's out of the format, we have Opt, we have Shock, we have this or that card that we saw in Ikoria or Theros, or whatever, but just no one's bringing up Finale of Promise, which is crazy to me. <laughs> That's insane. Play Finale of Promise in your Arclight Phoenix deck. It's a good card, I promise. I promise you. But on number two, I'm actually going to like cheat a little bit because I wanted these two cards to be on the list independent of one another. Then I realized that would be like kind of silly because they're they're going to go in the same deck and they kind of represent the same thing, sort of. Anyway, but let me go ahead and say it. <laughs> number two is All That Glitters, but it's also Satessan Champion, okay? Because you see what I'm doing here? <laughs> Very similar <laughs> in some ways. You know, I could say this, God, uh, do I have to say Teferi again? I have to say it like two more times, I think. I'm so sorry, but obviously if you put all that glitters on a creature, Teferi's not going to bounce that creature. That's kind of good. Uh, Lurus gets slightly better in this format without Teferi or else with Conqueror's Death seeing as much play. So maybe you see more Lurus, which means all that glitters does get a little bit better. There's that line of reasoning. Um, and also, Satessan Champion, not going to get bounced by Teferi, not going to get hit by Elspeth Conqueror's Death nearly as much. So Champion, way better as well, but these both go in the green-white enchantments deck, so I just... I thought it would be dumb to give them independent entries on the list. You see what I'm going for here. Uh, green one enchantments, probably just better. It's probably just a better deck nowadays. So give that a shot. I'm actually really interested to try out all the glitters with like Hateful Eidolon and that whole package of cards again. I think it could be really good. All the glitters is destined to be a really sweet card in this format, but it's always just been like just a smidge off of playability. But now that the format is a little bit more open to cards like this, we might actually this might actually be all the glitters time. I hope that it is. Same thing with like staggering insight, you know, like any two mana or one mana aura. Uh, just instantly looks way better in a format without Teferi, so I would be mm, I'd be building this deck right now, see how that is. I don't I, I would I haven't done that yet though. So I guess if I were me, I would do it, but I still haven't done it. I'm going to do it tonight. This is it. Just do it. It's probably good now. But the number one card that gets better, but no one's talking about it, really surprises me. <laughs> like All the different aggro decks that people want to play again now, all the different mid-range decks that people want to play again now, I somehow have not in any context heard Feather's name brought up yet. What? Why? Like, we still, we still get to play this card for five weeks. There's no Teferi. There's less Elspeth Conquers Deaths in the format. There just, there just are. Um, it's still here. I know. People still play in the card, but there are fewer of them. I can truthfully say that. I know I've said it a lot in this video, and people are probably, people are probably a little mad, people that don't agree with that, but it just, it is what it is. With less Bant, there's fewer Elspeth Conquers Deaths. So again, Feather just gets way better. Plus, you can play cards at instant speed again, right? Because there's no Teferi in the format. So all the instant speed spells that you want to play in your Feather deck instantly get better as well. There's no top-end, you know, late-game combo deck that's going to mow you down and you know control the board state and play sweepers and stuff in the meantime. So there's no Team of Reclamation. Another deck that I feel like was kind of taking this deck down a peg. So, there's, you know, no cat combo in the format anymore. So, again, less 
less and fewer um, claim the firstborn, which is massive for Feather because they can just snatch Feather with claim the firstborn, right? So it, you know, it, it, all of the things that got banned in some way affect Feather positively. So I'm really amazed that people aren't talking about Feather because it was people's like favorite aggro deck uh, a year and a half ago, and just no one cares. Now I guess we can just. Who cares about Feather, right? Let's play Mono Red. What are you doing? Like Feather, Feather looks so freaking good right now with a bevy of other cards. I just said bevy. I said bevy. It's something else weird earlier, but that happened more than five minutes ago, so I don't remember. That's how my mind works. But anyway, weird, weird words in this video. But still, I am amazed that the word Feather has not come off the lips of any other content creator or even just like Rando on Twitter that, or Reddit that I've seen yet. Feather is obviously, you know, massively affected positively by these bannings. And uh, we should probably be talking about it. It's a really, really, do you guys remember? It's a good card. A really good magic card here. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the cards that I have to talk about today, but there were a lot more I could talk about. You know, I just felt like stuff like Nicol Bolas, too many people talking about Grixis, right? You know, Mangara I wanted to bring up, but I think I've actually heard people talk about Mangara. There's a lot of things <laughs> that I wanted to talk about, but I felt were just slightly, slightly too talked about to make the video, I guess. But there are a lot of cards I could bring up here. Just let me know what I missed down there in the comments section. Let me know what cards you think people just aren't taking seriously enough right now that they freaking ought to. What is they? But anyway, aside from that, like I said earlier, if you just quickly maybe do the YouTube stuff, you can like and subscribe at the bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter at SBMTGDev. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash SBMTGDev and Jev, SBMTGDev. And of course, you can watch me play Magic on Twitch at SBMTGDev. That's what I'm kind of focusing on right now. You want to see your dude play a little bit of Magic cards? Go to, to Twitch. Follow me on that Twitch. I think that right now, we have like 117,000 plus subscribers on YouTube and like 800 followers on Twitch. So like less than 1% of my subscriber base on YouTube follow me, follows me on Twitch. So get in there. Get in, go to the Twitch box and follow follow you dude. I stream a lot. I play some janky decks. You're going to like it. But in any case, do that stuff. And also, of course, if you want to order any of these cards, you can do so through my dudes at TCG Player. They help you dude out. They help you boy. Um, so if you want to get any of these cards for the last month or so of the format, if you're actually playing Paper Magic like a mad lad, and you want to order some of these cards for some janky fun for the last five weeks, hit that link in the description, go over to Takag Player, check out some of them things. But anyway, I'm done. Those are all the... Those are all the things I was required to say in this YouTube video, but obviously I'm jacked about some of these cards. I really hope Rhythm of the Wild is real. It's probably not, but I hope that it is. But when it comes to stuff like Finale of Promise and Feather, you really, those are good. Play those cards. But in any case, like I said, let me know what I missed down there, and I will catch you cats later. I'm Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind.